All right, so we're going to go ahead and scan the top right now. So what that's going to do is we went ahead and put a tracer in the machine. That's going to go ahead and scan the top, and it's going to give us a layout of exactly where that piece is. So it's going to template it in place. Now that that's all scanned, now I can go ahead and bring and import that drawing. So you can see exactly those points that it scanned off of the piece. What I'll do is I'll put a box around this and we're gonna go ahead and run a profile on it. So we're at 500 and we are sitting with seven profile tools plus a power edge. So that brings us to eight. We're gonna go ahead and start placing them tools in the machine. And we're just gonna go ahead and apply just a little bit of that lubrication on each one. Now I'm automatically telling it what tool it has. Hit OK, hit the start button. Now we can see exactly the tool that's in the machine and I'm gonna tell it to automatic change with no tool in it next. So as we'll see, the tools will start uploading and now the machine knows exactly where each tool is you can still see we have a little bit of a shine on that tool, not too much, where it's dripping. Check the rotation. Keep that button held, place it with the, the pins. Okay, now looking at the tools that we just placed in the machine, it's gonna go ahead and show from position number seven all the way down to 17. It's gonna show it the blind hole drill. Then it's gonna have the core bit, finger bit, our Power Edge Super Z, our first position Diamond T33, our three flex version, position two, three, four, and five diamond, and then position six and seven polisher. So now we're getting ready to where we can run the footprint and verify some of the setup. So we're gonna go one tool at a time and do a verification process to make sure that we make any adjustments and then we'll move from there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that uh, Super Z first. It's gonna go ahead and trim that one millimeter off the material. Then we're gonna take our first position diamond, second, third, fourth, and fifth position diamond. We'll be able to kind of run those tools fairly fast. It's a little bit safer. And when we get into the polish wheels, we're gonna to have to slow things down and verify some of our heights and uh, diameters. So I'm gonna come over here to the program itself and we're gonna go ahead and press start. So. Always keeping the controls in hand, making sure that we're gonna go ahead and kind of walk these tools in at the very, very beginning. And we may go ahead and even pause these tools at one point in the piece. So bringing it down right now, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of ease it in. Once I have contact, remember we have these extreme high speeds at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead, pause it right here, and I wanna check my height to make sure that I have the true height. Sometimes utilizing a credit card can simply go ahead and give you a quick eye on this Super Z. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that card, I'm going to go directly up against the service, and I'm going to come up to the piece. Right now I'm just barely coming into contact with that piece itself or with the, uh, the tool. And I can tell that, you know what, I might want to go ahead and drop this down a little bit more. It's coming into contact with the full piece. I actually have diamond below the surface. However, I wanna go ahead and bring it just a little bit more, just in case we have some material that has some bowing or whatever. So it's gonna go ahead and take care of that. So there's no issues with this. We'll go ahead and make that adjustment after the fact. So we'll start this back up, turning your feed rate back down to zero. So you'll see rotation come on. And we'll start this right back up running and we'll go straight all the way up to the 300 inches a minute. So next we're gonna have our first position profiled T33 R3 for that flex version. 
So keep in mind right now our quartz materials typically are a lot thinner than what they had been in the past. So we're actually finding materials are coming at 27 and a half, 28, 29 millimeter, where typically they used to be 30 to 31 millimeter. So some of these tools are going to hit a little bit different. So once again, just going to kind of slowly bring it in here until it brings contact. I can go ahead and stop it right before if I prefer to make sure that my height is approximately right. So I can do the same thing, grabbing a credit card, verifying where that height comes in so I can bring this into the profile itself. If I'm setting into the profile, I know I'm going to be good. Top and bottom if you want to verify that. So I know that my setup is fine top and bottom based off of those dimensions that we took and we're good to run. Once again, feed rate back down to zero. Press start. We'll see the tool start to rotate. Once it's in full rotation, we'll start the process back up and we'll turn it all the way. Once it comes into contact at the very beginning, we'll increase that feed rate all the way to 100%. As we start doing this, we'll start seeing transition lines on that stone itself. And this is really what we're gonna look for at the uh, end to make sure that these are properly set up. As we come here, our position two. So we can do the same thing with position two. Now remember that this is gonna be running at 500 inches a minute. So we're definitely gonna to wanna to slow it down at the very front and then we can increase that feed rate. Come here again, I'll go ahead and grab a credit card and we're gonna go ahead and verify again making sure that my lineup is approximately right. So I know that it's gonna come into the diamond on both the top and the bottom, so I don't have an issue there. Back down to zero for the feed rate. Once I get my rotation at 100%, I know I'm good to go. I'm gonna ease this in. Once I have that contact, I know I've got the diamonds open. I can turn that all the way up. So remember, this is a first original setup. So if you do this the first time, this process is gonna be a little bit slower. Down the road, when you rerun these footprints, it's gonna be less than five minutes to go ahead and run that. So at the very beginning, a setup is gonna take some time. Now keep in mind, Position two, three, four, and five diamonds. When we did all the measurements, we had the top and bottom of that, the uh, past the diamond. So we had 4.5 millimeter, if I do remember properly. So that setting for all of those tools are exactly the same. So when we put our heights in, we know that these should all be exactly spot on. So we'll go ahead, next tool, sounds nice. We'll ramp that up. We go ahead and see we never got over four, maybe five amps on that tool running at 500 inches a minute. Now we're coming into position four profiling tool. We're going to go ahead and we'll ease it in slightly. Sounds good. And we'll run that full speed. Each tool, you can hear the contact is most important. As we're viewing it, we're starting to see that stair step effect. So that stair step effect is actually going ahead and showing exactly how much removal you have on each tool. And this is a really, really important part of being able to run at these high speeds and getting the quality that you want. At a first glance, we can see we have a step removal on every single piece. When we get down to the polishers, we'll see a transition line as far as the shine goes. That shine will increase as the polish break in. So keep in mind, typically the tools, it's gonna to take a little bit of time to go ahead and get that polish all the way up. The new version of Diamut's polishers are gonna go ahead and reduce that break in period drastically from what it was in the future. So what we also wanna do is we've got ourselves a little mechanics mirror. This mechanics mirror is going to allow us to go in here on the bottom side and be able to see that transition line 
as we're going down from each step, showing if the polisher is removing everything or if it's polishing up properly. As you get going, you'll be able to feel exactly what you're looking for. So right now, we've got a nice start on where our tools are. Now we just want to go ahead and we want to break those in a little bit and we'll let them run for a little while. But as of what we want to do too is also show you a couple quick options as far as how we can make some adjustments with the Intermac machine on changing the material thickness height and how we can go ahead and adjust these and drop them down. What we're also going to do is we're going to grab another piece of stone that's a little bit thicker so we can see exactly how these tools are working from top to bottom in that whole transition.